the joy and the excitement that I see in the house. I want to thank the leadership of the church. I want to thank Pastor. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for your team. They are wonderful people. I want you to put your hands together for your pastors and their team for putting together something like this. Praise the Lord. All right, today we're going to be looking at mental health. We are talking basically about balancing work and family responsibilities. So, do you prefer me to be up here or should I come down here to you? I should be here? Okay. All right, so we are looking at balancing health and um, balancing our work and family responsibilities. Something happened a few days ago, not really a few days ago, but some times ago. My daughter, who is currently doing her IT, you know, her IT is supposed to be for six months. And um, when she started, two weeks into the IT, I realized that she was constantly frowning her face, looking all worked up and all stressed up. So we had to have a talk. I called her, I was like, what exactly is going on? So she, was, she started telling me some of the experiences, the challenges she's having. And the truth is that her schedule has totally changed. You know, when they are in the school, they run their lectures and they can go for their lectures. You know, a whole, they don't do like um, eight to five. They have their different times for their lectures and all of that. But by the time she started her IT, it was a totally different ball game. So when we're having that chit chat, she, 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 she broke down at some point. She was weeping and she was crying. I was like, what's up? What's, why are you like this? He said, mom, I can't, I can't cope. I wake up very early. I'm coming home by, she wakes up very early. She leaves the house by a few minutes past six because she had to join one of their members of staff so that she can catch up with him and then go to work. And she comes home at around six o'clock. So it was already beginning to weigh down on her. This is something that she's not used to. This is something that she's not familiar with. It's totally different from waking up in the morning, going for her lectures, and deciding how to run her things. This is a structured organization, and this is what we wanted for her. It wasn't that she wasn't enjoying the job, but she was already becoming overwhelmed by the work. So we had to sit down, and I had to tell her that, see, okay, I'm going to give you one week to readjust yourself. I'm going to allow you, when you go to work, you come back, don't do any chores because when she comes back from work, she normally do some of the chores before she will go up and retire and everything. So I said, I will take that off from you. I'm giving you one week to readjust yourself and to adapt to this new terrain. So why I'm saying all of that is to bring home to us that balancing work and family responsibilities they are, is a common source of stress among people who are working. Whether you are a young adult, whether you are a mommy, among people who are working, it's a major source of stress. And in a productive, driven society like our own, more and more people are finding it difficult to adequately fulfill their roles at home and also in the workplace. More and more people are finding it difficult to find a balance between their family commitment and their work responsibilities. And many times what we see begin to happen is that we begin to give priority to one of these responsibilities while the other responsibility begins to suffer. True or false? That is the experience that we have many times. And this behavior leads to some dysfunctional outcomes that begins to have a toll on our overall well-being. So you, you begin to experience strains in our family relationship. Our relationship with our loved one becomes distant. We become even unproductive and inefficient in the workplace and even at the home front. It begins to affect our physical, our emotional, our mental health, and our, 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 our overall well-being. And that is why it's becoming more and more imperative for us to sit down and begin to ask ourselves, what exactly can we do in order to be able to balance these responsibilities? It may look like a daunting task. Seriously, it is a daunting task. Not that it looks like. It is a daunting task. But it is something that we all can do if we put priority to where it's supposed to be. So let's look at it. What exactly is... When we talk about balancing family 
and work responsibilities. What do we mean? So let's look at the definition. I would define balancing work and family responsibilities to be your ability to adequately manage your family commitment and sufficiently carry out your work responsibilities. So it's like a scale. The truth is this, balance is more like a mint. It's like a chasing after the wind. It's a wild goods chase, to be very frank with you. You can really not attain balance per se. But what you can do is to constantly be checking and adjusting your scale to be sure that none, none of these responsibilities is found wanting. So the other definition that I will give to balancing work and responsibility is that that you being ensuring, striving, making the effort to see that all of these your responsibilities, you can juggle them without dropping any ball. And the other thing we also need to know about balancing work and responsibility is that balance is not static, like I said. It's not something that you say, okay, I have gotten to this place, now I am a very balanced person, so to speak. But it is your ability to the, the decisions, the series of decisions that you make from time to time to be able to allocate your limited resources effectively. That is what balance really is about. So I want you to have it at the back of your mind that when you are talking about balance, there is no way you can be here and be in your home at the same time. Tell me, can anybody do that? As you are here, something is going on in your, in your home. Somebody is there doing something, taking care of some responsibilities because you can't be here and be there at the same time. As you are in the workplace, you cannot also be in the market. You cannot also be in the church. You can only be at a place part time. True or false? So that is the truth. Now, let me ask us. When we put work and family side by side, I want you to ponder on this question. Which one do you consider to be the most important one? Family. If you are family, let me see your hand. Family. Who are the people that believe that work is the most important? Okay. So everybody believes that family is the most important. Family is the most important. I agree with you. But the truth is that in our current economic reality, it is going to be very difficult to see a family who... We are only one spouse is working and the other person is not working. True or false? Why? Because there is need for us to have income from different sources so that we can be able to meet our family responsibilities. So why family is very important? Work is equally important. So if work is important and family is important, what you now see begin to happen is that we begin to find ourselves struggling to ensure that we make both ends to meet. We struggle to ensure that we have the best of the work, we have the best of the family, we have the best of everything. We are trying as much as we can to ensure that we hold everything together. But many times, we find it extremely difficult to achieve that. So that is why you begin to see some negative effects that begin to show up when we are not able to. Like my daughter, you could see her it's beginning to affect her, her health. It's beginning to affect her physically. She fell sick a few days ago because a lot is, is she's being overwhelmed. So that is what begins to happen. I remember a particular movie that I watched some times ago. This lady is very passionate. She was working in the teens ministry. She was working in a school, actually, in a high school with teenagers. She was a lecturer. And she was a very passionate one at that. This lady, she's, she was married to her husband, just the two of them. But she was really passionate about this work. After work every day, she has time for the teenagers. She will sit down with them, talk about their problems, trying to find solutions, helping them even beyond the school. And the teenagers fell in love with her. They were always rallying around her. But every time she finishes, she closes very late. She gets home, she's so tired, she doesn't know how to meet the husband's need. Because the husband has a less demanding kind of work. So the husband gets home many times before her. So when she gets home, she's already fagged out. She's already tired. She eats, she takes her bath, and then she falls off asleep. 
and the husband started complaining. The husband was complaining. She was, you know, coming up with these excuses. But you know, this is something I'm passionate about. You know, the teenagers like me. You know, they need somebody like me in their life. You know, you know, I need to be there to make these things happen in their life. You need to understand. She was expecting her husband to understand. And the husband was trying so hard to understand. But while he was trying so hard to understand, he also had his own needs that were not being met. And as the husband continued to talk, this lady was not getting it. Sometimes he will, she will come back home and the husband is totally ignoring her just to send home that message. But she wasn't getting it. Until one day, she went to work and she came back home. To her greatest surprise, the husband has packed all his belongings and told her that I can't do this no more. I think you have made your choice. Stay with your passion. Stay with your work. It's apparent that I am not as important to you as that work. So I have filed him for a divorce. I can't do this no more. Do you get that? Do you see that? That is what happens when we cannot find a balance. But do you think that particular issue was that difficult that they couldn't resolve it? Do you think there is something that they, they could have done? There are so many things they could have done. Th that marriage didn't need to break up. But it did. Because somebody was finding it extremely difficult to balance the things that were important to her. The children were important. The husband was important. But at that point, it was, she was giving more attention to the children at the expense of her relationship. So that is what happened. Some of the adverse effects of not being able to manage this responsibility is that it begins to affect you physically. You begin to have that physical exhaustion. How many women, I know that many women, many times they feel overstressed. Many times they feel overstretched. Many times they feel so over, overwhelmed and frustrated. At some point I asked my husband, I am taking care of everybody who is taking care of me. Who is taking care of me? Really speaking, sometimes the man is like, but I'm here. I'm doing everything. Yes, you are making the provision. We have the beautiful home. We have, you are, our needs are met. But who is taking care of my own personal need? I ask that question. And that is why you see many women today. We get into that place where we walk and walk and walk and we get to that place where we feel so physically exhausted. You become so irritable. You become intolerant. Everything annoys you. Get out of my way. Because you can't handle it anymore. Things are falling apart within you. It may look as if you are having it all put together around you. But within you, need, you know you are breaking down. You know, like you know your name, that you are breaking down. So, it affects your, you physically. Sometimes it gets to you getting physically ill and sick. If you listen to my voice, you can hear that it's cracking. I've been down under the weather for like how many? I had so much on my table. I had so much on my table. So, you, you, you gradually get to that place where you become emotionally distant from your children. Emotionally distant from your loved ones, from your family, from your friends. Not because you want to, but the work is killing you. The responsibilities are killing you. You get to that place where you can no longer sleep. It begins to affect your mental health. You begin to become overly anxious, worried, and even get to the place of depression and sometimes suicidal. These are the things that are happening. Emotionally, you become affected. Spiritually, you become affected. Psychologically, you become affected. Your overall well-being becomes affected. So what do we do? I don't have so much time. What do we do? How do you balance work and family responsibilities? The first thing I need you to pay attention to is the fact that you need to prepare and plan for what we call the seasons of life. There is something called the seasons of life. You need to prepare, plan for the seasons of life. Now what happens is that, the Bible said there is a time and a season for everything. In the book of, book of Ecclesiastes, true or false, you, there are 
different seasons in life. And one of the reasons why we get so fluttered, frazzled, and overwhelmed, and even act shocked, is because for some of these seasons, we walk into them without being prepared. Tell me how many of you were taught about motherhood? How many people were, were taught about pregnancy? About what will happen to you in nine months? About what will happen to you in the labor world? Has there, did anybody teach you about what will happen to you by the time you have your, your first child? These are different seasons of life. By the time a child becomes a teenager, that child is entering a, a completely new season of life. That is called puberty. And that is why you see so many teenagers, they get so frustrated, they get so overwhelmed. They don't know what to do with these things that is happening around me. My body is changing, my mood is changing, my thoughts are changing. What is going on with me? Nobody is telling them anything. I learned a few days ago that a mother beat the child because the child got stained in a public transport. She's beating the child. And story have it that even this child was not prepared for menstruation. A 13 year old child. But the mother was busy beating her. Beating her for what? Because she assumed that the child should know how to take care of menses. Where is she supposed to know? We're supposed to teach her. Thank you. But here she is, putting more pressure on this child. This child is already embarrassed, as it were. And you are adding to that embarrassment. And you think you are helping that child. It's a parental error for you to be assuming and expecting your child to know what you have not taught them. So what do you do? By the time the child enters into university, it's a new season. By the time the child enters into marriage, I normally tell some of our premarital class students that once you sign the dotted line, the, your life will never be the same again. And that is the simple truth. So for each of these seasons, you need to prepare adequately so that you need to understand that each of these seasons comes with their different roles, with their different responsibilities. They are going to put demand on you in the way that you have never experienced before. And you need to prepare for it. Because in preparing for it, it will help you to make wise decisions. It will make you to choose your commitment selectively. And it will help you to manage your time effectively. So by the time you are having, at this season of my life, all my children, my last child is 18 years. At this season, I can do certain things I couldn't have done when they were toddlers. At some point in my life, I had to resign from work and take up a more flexible work so that I could be with them. These are things you need to put in perspective. By reason of this season of my life, what are the things I need to sacrifice? What are the things I need to let go so that my responsibilities will be properly managed? Do I need to get a particular kind of job so that I will be able to do school run for my children? Do I need to get a school that has a bus arrangement so that I can take off the responsibility of school running from me? These are all the decisions you need to make. But you need to understand your season. If you're already working, what kind of rearrangements, reorganization do I need? I, do I need more flexible working hours so that I can pay my attention? Because the truth is, at different seasons of your child's life, there are times, see, do you know that there are certain things you cannot outsource? There are things, you, there are responsibilities you can't outsource. You can't outsource parenting. You cannot outsource your wifely duties. You cannot go and employ somebody that will come and be taking care of your husband. Having sex so that you can be, be busy with your work. So you, you employ somebody. So I will pay you this amount every month so that you can be having sex with my husband. You can't outsource that, can you? You can't. A particular story was told of a woman who was a banker for several years. She was doing so well in her career. But she had a nanny who was taking care of her children. She was cl climbing the ladder, the corporate ladder, until one day she came home to carry her baby. Her baby called her auntie and calls the nanny mommy. She said she entered her room and broke down in tears. The, 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 the message was clear. She didn't, need, she didn't need an interpreter. She got the message loud and clear. It was here and then that she resigned from her banking job. 
seasons of life. The next thing you need to understand is that you need to consider all of your responsibilities to be important. You need to. Your work is important. Your family is important. But you need to also understand that sacrifices are going to be made at different times. There are times you need to take permission from that world so that you can be at your child's PTA meeting. They need you there. When they see you, they know that they matter to you. So, you need to understand that they are all important, but at different times, one may be needing my attention. So you, can, you may not be able to do everything, but you have to create time to do what is the most important part time. That is one of the things you need to help yourself. Then the next thing you need to also know in balancing work and responsibility is to know that balancing be begins with you. Tell yourself, balancing begins with you. If you are going to be able to manage your responsibilities, it starts with you. But unfortunately, this is something that many women find difficult to do. You know why? Women are inherently created to be nurturers. We are created to be caregivers. We are created to be homemakers. And the truth is, we find fulfillment and satisfaction in this job. That is what makes us tick as women. So many women don't want to be seen as selfish when they are not there to dispense these virtues. And that is why we are always wanting to do, to be there to everybody. We want to be there for my sister Bede. You will be there for your brother's um, naming ceremony. You will be there for everybody. You want to be everything for everybody. We find it difficult to say no. We want to say yes to everything, to everybody, because we want to please them. We want to be nice at our own expense. Women get so lost in carrying out their responsibility of meeting, meeting other people's needs to the point that they don't even know what it looks like again to meet their own needs. And this is something you need to challenge yourself to. You need to begin to pay attention, focus on you. Tell your sister, focus on you. It's not selfishness to focus on you. When you focus on you, you are preparing yourself, equipping yourself, Arming yourself with everything you need so that you can be what you should be to your family and to your friend. It's not selfishness. It is called self-care. The Bible says love your neighbor as yourself. It didn't say love them more than yourself. So you have to share it equally. You have to share it equally. So the first thing to do in, self, in, taking, care, in taking care of you is prioritize self-care. Listen, you see your health, your mental health, your spiritual health, your overall health, and your sanity is God's gift to you. What you do with these resources is your gift back to God. And God wants you to be a good steward of these resources. He wants you. Nobody can take care of you than you. Nobody. Listen, when I'm asking my husband who is taking care of me, who will take care of me? The answer was there. You are to take care of you. If you don't create time for you, everybody will continue. As long as you are available, you continue to dispense. So you need to create time for yourself. You need to take care of yourself physically. You have to make those choices that will help you to stay fit, energized, active, and ready to take on your responsibilities effectively. You have to make the choices to, to engage in regular exercises. These are the things that boost your immune system. Take away depression, anxiety, and worry from you. The other thing that you also need to do is to learn to manage your commitment. This is so key and so important. Let me tell you, as you go on, responsibility is not a finish. You are the one. There are so many things clamoring for your attention and for your commitment. You are the one that will wisely decide when to make commitments. You can't say yes to everything. 
Your school is asking for your commitment. Your children's school is asking for your commitment. Your neighborhood is asking for your commitment. Your church in the community is asking for your commitment. Your work is asking for your commitment. Everybody is looking for your commitment. That is the truth. There are some positions and responsibilities they bring to me in church. And I'll tell them clearly, I cannot take it. It's not because I don't want to. It's not because I've backslided. It is because if I take it, I will be overwhelmed. I will not be able to manage my responsibilities effectively. The time will come when you can step in and do those things that you cannot do now. Listen, the first three years of your children's life, they need you. Don't sacrifice this for anything. Parenting is an 18-year plan. 18-year plan. Don't joke with it. Don't joke with your parenting responsibilities. It's a ministry and you need to know it. Parenting, motherhood is a ministry. It's a primary calling. Don't let social media tell you otherwise. Take this responsibility seriously. Do you know what it means to raise a child? One responsible child is like raising one nation. You are co-creators with God. Don't mess up with your responsibilities. You don't need to please anybody. You have one audience and that is God. As long as you are in alignment with what he wants you to do. Let them know that you can't do this now. At some other time I may be able to. There are different seasons. At these seasons of my life, if my children need me. How do you carry toddlers and be running up and down for five services at a stretch? You have toddlers and you are taking them to night vigil and you are useless in the night vigil. The children that should be sleeping, they are sleeping in the night vigil on the floor. Does it mean you don't love God? No. Let me tell you. When I got married and I was having my first child, I, as a single lady, my goal for prayer, I give God one tenth of my 24 hours for prayer. As a single lady, I pray between three hours to four hours every day as a single lady. When my first child came, I remember that I could no longer pray. That was the eighth aspect of my life that was touched. And it pained me. Because my kind of prayer was, I wake up in the early hours of the morning from 12, I can pray three, three or four. Until one day, as I sat, I remember that day like today. I was sitting down on the chair, feeding my son, and I was crying. I was crying. I was telling God, what about the time I used to spend with you? I can no longer spend that time because I have to give time to my child. I have to stay awake in the night, and by the time I want to wake up and pray, I can no longer pray. Days, weeks, we are going by, and I was losing my fellowship with God. As I stayed there and I was crying, tears were roaring. I was looking at my blessing. My child cannot be a burden. It's a blessing from God. I asked God, what exactly is happening? How am I going to sustain this fellowship that I always have with you? He told me, this is your primary assignment. Do it and do it well. When it comes to prayer, you don't need to have those times again because of the current season. You can pray, you can talk to me 247. As you are breastfeeding, be praying. From that day, my perspective changed. I am, I am feeding my baby. I am Rabaka Soto Paliande. Mande Rebo Robo Sotoria. Ento Palia. I am sweeping the floor. Liki Sinta Valiande Rebo. En Seteria. I am washing clothes. Maka Soto Boria. God was constantly with me. I just didn't know it. I just didn't know it. So I kid him. These are the things that happen. You need to take care of your, that commitment, those commitments. What about your spiritual health? I just talked about it now. Your spiritual relationship with God must, is a non-negotiable priority. Don't sacrifice it for anything. You can talk to God about anything. I pray everywhere. As I'm driving, I'm praying. As I'm lying down, I'm praying. I don't wait for that time again. I still create that time. But if I cannot create the time because of responsibilities, I know that God is with me everywhere I go. I don't keep God in the church. God is on the inside of me. 
So I carry him everywhere I go. So in the toilet, I'm praying. On the road, I'm praying. In my workplace, everywhere I'm praying. Because I want the consciousness of his presence. So that's how you can help to manage your responsibility. And let me say this. I think my time is up. Yes, let me say this. Sisters, you need to focus on your journey. Our journeys are not the same. Our journeys are not the same. See, eh? one of the mental health care that you need to go give yourself is to take care of your mind. The thoughts, the feelings, and the behaviors that stem from your mind. The inner conversations that you are having constantly. Those are the things that weigh you down. You need to capture them. The Bible says, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, think on these things. But what happens is that we are busy comparing ourselves to other people. And the Bible said that he that compares himself to another is a fool. The society is so competitive. You are busy competing with your A, Mr. A, Mr. B. You want your children to be like this one. You want your child to be like that one. Let me tell you, life is not a popularity contest. Quit the competition. Stay on your lane and run your own race. Your journey is different. Stop comparing and competing with one another. That is part of what is affecting our mental health. Be satisfied with where you are per time. Stop comparing yourself. There is no need. No need for that. You know, we compare ourselves so much that we cannot even enjoy what God has given to us. You focus so much on what you don't have that you lose touch of what you do have. Look around you. There are so many things to be grateful for. Keep a gratitude journal. It will help you. It's one of the things I do for my children when they come back for holiday, when all of us are together. I tell them, keep a gratitude journal for one month. And then we, we fix a date where we all come together and we read out our gratitudes. And it will amaze everybody. When you are picking little, little things that God has done for you, you don't need to compare yourself with anyone. You are so unique and so special. God is working on you specially and he will take you to your destined end. You don't need comparison. You don't need competition. Stay on your journey. Stay on your journey. So when it comes to balance, like I told you, there are so many things to say, but this is as far as we can go. But when it comes to balance, please, brethren, don't chase after balance. It's a chasing after the wind. Chase after having a beautiful relationship with God. The Bible said that he's the one that holds everything. In his hands. Once you stay connected to God. He will help you. He will give you wisdom. On how to balance and to manage. Your other responsibilities. I can assure you of that. Nurture your relationship with God. Prioritize self care. Manage your commitments. Don't be everywhere. Because you want to be everything for everybody. You cannot. Prioritize your time. And I can assure you. When you put all of this together, you'll be able to assuredly tell yourself that you have been able to manage your family and your work responsibility. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Can we pray for our guest? The Lord has used that to bless us. Can we stretch forth our hands to her? That the Lord will replenish her. As much as has gone out, the Lord will replenish. The Lord will grant her grace. From grace to grace. From height to height. From glory to glory. Next time she stands, she will minister on that air a more increased anointing. Thank you, Father. As we are praying, so shall it be in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you. We appreciate. Thank you so much. All right. Okay. Um, I'm sure you'll agree with me that that was indeed 
a good one. It's something that we need to ask for, maybe from the media, so or we can watch again, so that we can rewatch and watch and watch again. I pray that indeed God it will bless us richly. Okay, we can just take just one one question, because of time. That is, if we have any, one question. Okay, we have one. Okay, I will come to you. Thank you, mommy, for your your time. I'm very um, grateful. I, our daddy should have been here to listen to this. I have um, um, two questions, ma'am. Please, what do you do with a husband that does not understand these seasons? And you, like, you have a baby, and he's always telling you, go for that program, do this one, do that one. What do you do with a husband that don't understand these seasons of your life? That's one. Then the second one is, um, without preparing for a particular season, perhaps you, you just find yourself in that season. You know that season will come, but you did not even know that um, you are supposed to prepare for that season because it happened to me, if not by the grace of God, I will not be married by now. I really had a serious challenge when I had my first child and there was so much, so much pressure, so much. I had to, I quit my job. It was not still enough. I had to, we were separated for some years because I believe it was because of that lack of preparation and I could not really take a hold of it and to tell talking to family or the one we say leave come back stay there do this do that if not for the intervention of god by now i don't think i will still be with the same person so what do you do when you did not prepare for a particular season and you are now in that season and when you have a husband that doesn't really understand these seasons and you are just there struggling all by yourself thank you thank you very much indeed for that uh, let's have a breather and i'm sure she would answer your question Thank you, ma. All right, ma. Thank you for that question. The first one, what do you do to a husband who doesn't understand this season? My sister, you are not the only one that is in that shoe. Hmm? Many of us, many people find themselves in that shoe because the truth is that when it comes to homekeeping, family, the woman is prepared, let me say like 10 times, even before the man. So as we are getting into the married marriage, it's like you are ready prepared for everything that is going to happen Instinct, in, instinctively. Do you understand? In, the practicality is what we are not really having a hold of. But the man is still trying to understand this whole thing about the home, taking care of children, family. He doesn't get it. So what I would advise is that you need patience. A lot of patience. And you need to keep the communication gap open so that if you have a plan for your marriage, like a family vision, family goals, that would help you because both of you would have set that together and then you are working towards achieving that goal. But you need to keep the communication line open so that you can keep bringing these things. But while you are being patient and giving it time, you need to do what both of you wants to be done, what he wants to do. Like you said, he wants you to attend the program. Well, attending programs will not kill you. So you can be doing it. But when you do it, he too will be able to see how it is affecting everybody. Because like for, for me, at some point when my children were toddlers, we had to still be going for night vigil because my, past, my, my husband was an associate pastor in the church. And by reason of those responsibilities, we considered it necessary for us to be present in those programs. But before you know what was happening, for, for most of those programs like night vigil, you carry the children, the children are sleeping on the floor. Even you, you cannot pray because your attention is on the children. So at the end of the day, the whole, the whole program is a wasted exercise for you because of the children. So we are the, the people, myself and my husband, we are the ones that sat down to evaluate. And that is why your family goals and vision come in. You constantly evaluate what is happening. Are we meeting our family goals? Are we giving these children the enough time? Are we giving them everything that they need? Are we doing well? What do we need to stop doing? What should we add to what we are already doing? You have to constantly evaluate. So that you will know how are some of these activities helping you in this season. And that is where that communication will be able to help you. Then... The second one has to do with, can you just? Preparation for seasons. 
Many of us are not prepared for decisions. Many of us. It is a societal problem. For someone like me, before I got into marriage, I, I read several books. Because I told God that if you want me to marry, at some point I told God I wasn't interested in marriage. After having my first broken engagement, I told him I was interested in loving you, doing ministry, and working with you. That was all I needed. But by the time you told me that I needed to get married, I read books before I got into marriage. But what you read in books and what you experience, they are two different things. So by the time I got into the marriage, you can say I was prepared. Mm -hmm. But when I got into the marriage, it was time to do practice. So when you are not prepared and you find yourself in that season, what you do is that you don't get too hard on yourself. Begin to ask questions. Be passionate about learning. What do I need to learn? What are the things I need to put in place? For me, I knew that even though I have read several books, when some of the challenges faces, faces me, because I have those books, I will climb my, my bookshelf, bring down those books, start opening all the places I've li lined up. I will read it over and over again. Okay, is this what I'm supposed to do? At the end, I, I was still buying books, depending on the needs that I had. So that's what you do. You may not be prepared for the season, but in that season, you can still prepare yourself. So that's what you do. Thank you very much.